नमस्कार आई एम बैक अगेन एंड दिस इज द सेकेंड ट्यूटोरियल एंड टूडे वी विल लर्न हाउ टू इम्पोर्ट न्यू टू डी मेटेरियल स्ट्रक्चर्स इन टू आवर ग्राफिकल यूजर इंटरफेस बुराई एंड सिमुलेट दैट विथ क्वान्टम एक्सप्रेसो सो फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल वी विल टेक द वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट ट्रांजिशन मेटल डाइज एल्कोजेनाइट एम ओ एस टू विच इज ऑल्सो ए टू डी मेटेरियल एंड द थिंग अबाउट गेटिंग दिस टू डी मेटेरियल स्ट्रक्चर्स इज यू नीड टू सर्च सम ऑनलाइन रिपोजिटरीज टू गेट दो स्ट्रक्चर फाइल्स एंड आई प्रेफर यूजिंग दिस कंप्यूटेशनल टू डी मेटेरियल्स डेटाबेस इट इज ए फ्री एंड ओपन सोर्स मेटेरियल्स रिपोजिटरी हैविंग मोर देन टू थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ लेयर टू डी मेटेरियल्स Uh, in this you can see the, there is a search engine and i will put mos2 in this one okay. so this is the website you can see and uh, i just put this in the search engine and i will get this uh, result i have search results and from that i can select uh, MOS2. So this is the MOS2 structure uh, the repository is showing, and it is uh, it also has a viewer with uh, JSMOL. So it is a browser version of JMOL, and uh, with this you can uh, change it from uh, unit cell uh, to super cell, but uh, because i want to use the unit cell so i will uh, download this unit cell and it also gives us the option uh, to choose the file format so uh, talking of uh, file formats there are uh, several uh, possible file formats for uh, the crystallographic uh, data and uh, very popular is uh, cif and xyz file formats uh, in this uh, this c2db database uh, you can dial, download either uh, in xyz or json format so we can download uh, using the xyz format uh, and just to take a look at the different kind of formats uh, that exist i will just uh, show you some examples uh, the two most popular examples cif and xyz so this is uh, an example of a, a cif file of a graphene uh, 2d graphene unit cell and here you see that uh, there are several tags this uh, type of data global and then uh, there are several uh, flags showing the cell length a b and c in angstroms then uh, the angle between the different cell vectors symmetry space group and uh, in what sequence the equivalent positions uh, in terms of x y and z coordinates are there that is written in the cif file and you see that that is uh, the first character is label atom site label second character is uh, the fraction null x value y and z so likewise so there are two carbon atoms and these are the fractional values in the unit cell uh, having these dimensions so this is uh, uh, the file of graphene that we showed yesterday in cif format and uh, the same thing in xyz format looks a bit different so here you can have uh, this uh, figure on the top of the file this uh, is the number of atoms it contains the second line is generally uh, if it begins with the text it is uh, generally a comment line you can put it bulk or molecule sometimes you can write some uh, data of your simulation uh, that the uh, that is or possibly the reference uh, paper from which these uh, coordinates are taken but uh, you can you will see different kind of uh, structures and then the element these are the uh, positions and then you have Uh, the fractional coordinates as well so uh, 
this is one uh, type of format there are several uh, variants uh, even among the xyz and this is what the uh, c2db database gives you uh, for mos2 so i have already downloaded the file i have already downloaded the file on my desktop so this is uh, c2db 1855 is just the number corresponding to uh, mos2 in the, their database and there i have uh, this uh, xyz file and if I open it, uh, I can see that uh, there are three uh, different atoms as uh, visible as visible in the uh, JSON file uh, moments ago. Uh, so I'll just uh, show it to you in the GUI in a moment. So here you have uh, the different uh, coordinates you have the xyz coordinates and uh, also uh, you can have the lattice uh, parameters uh, written in a different manner so if i look at uh, this uh, input file if i take it uh, import it into the gui into burai this is how the xyz file uh, looks like uh, it is pretty similar to what was there in the viewer and we can see that uh, what we have is an atom of molybdenum so uh, this uh, green circle the green sphere this is indicating molybdenum the metal and uh, this uh, yellow spheres are indicating the sulfur uh, you can see the legends right here and um, if I look at my input file in the geometry uh, I can see there you go uh, I can see that uh, it is uh, saying that uh, this is a hexagonal lattice I can know that from this eyebrow 4 uh, number of atoms NAT that is 3 uh, but in the viewer you are uh, seeing a larger number of atoms because this is just showing the symmetry because it is a periodic system it is a perfect system so uh, sometimes the viewer will uh, show you atoms at uh, their uh, periodic sites if they are on the edges of the axis uh, say this is the origin uh, and at each edge it is showing uh, the equivalent uh, uh, MO atom uh, but in the unit cell for calculation it is only going to take uh, what was provided in the unit file so um, uh, in the uh, structure file so the structure file has this atomic positions for molybdenum for sulfur and for another sulfur atom so a and C you can see uh, these two parameters they are uh, showing the lattice vectors so A and B are same in this case so uh, this is about 3.18 angstrom and C is about uh, 18 angstroms so this is in the Z direction so this is the structure of uh, MOS2 unit cell so what we can do with this, we can play uh, with the structure a little bit to see how it looks in a supercell. If you want to make a supercell out of it, you have to go to the modeler, I do that again. So uh, we just go to this modeler. and then we will put the scaling values so 3 3 1 so I will repeat this uh, unit cell 3 units uh, 3 times in X 3 times in Y and 1 times in Z because it's a 2D material and uh, this uh, will show you uh, MOS2 sheet you can manipulate the 
uh, view and you can see how the structure looks like so basically uh, what we see that the, it's uh, the molybdenum atoms are in one plane and the sulfur atoms are in a different plane so actually it is uh, uh, like um, three atoms thick and it is a single layer of MOS2 and it is having a hexagonal structure uh, so very interesting structure so we will uh, we will be using the only the unit cell for our calculation so we will not uh, reflect this model upon the input file so uh, just select uh, no here because I want to proceed with this file only this is good enough because the system is periodic it does not have any defects so I really don't need to uh, do anything uh, to uh, because uh, if I have a larger supercell it will take much more calculation time and if the system is perfect you can uh, just go ahead with the unit cell uh, only in case you are inducing defects or something then you might need uh, to have a supercell and uh, create the defects in them but uh, Let's now go to the geometry. Uh, from this, we go to the SCF because we want to set up the calculations. You might want to see the force and the stress, so put these flags there. Cutoff energy, uh, you can set it to about 50 readworks, and cutoff charge as a rule of thumb. Uh, for quantum espresso go for four times uh, of the wave function cutoff so this will be around 200 and k points is 4 by 4 by 1 I will go with it because I have a uh, home desktop uh, it is not a workstation so I wouldn't really want to put too much uh, k points occupation smearing and I will have the Fermi direct type of smearing so this sets up my calculation for the SCF for my bands calculation how many bands do I want let's put in 50 here and uh, use the crystal coordinates Here I can change the points, just uh, double click on this uh, field and enter the value, press enter. So I will have 50 points at each of the sampling path segment of my brilliant zone because I will again uh, simulate my uh, material in the gamma mk gamma direction. So I will just put all these values, I will key in these values and this I will just right click and I can delete. Alright, so the band is also set up, the density of states. Um, just like uh, in the previous case for graphene, we will use a higher uh, number of k points as compared to uh, that for the SCF calculation and here we have 9 by 9 by 1, maybe 50 bands, smearing, use Fermi Dirac and maximum energy I will set to 15 minimum energy minus 50 because uh, this is the energy range you want to see on the density of states uh, usually you don't need to go uh, very far away from the Fermi level Fermi level will be usually set at 0 that's how the software is going to display the output so uh, 15 electron volts on both sides of the Fermi level is quite sufficient and uh, this plotting for the broadening for the plot uh, is simple Gaussian is okay another interesting thing we can do is also 
optimize. Although this structure is pretty much um, uh, downloaded from a database and it is uh, already uh, an optimized structure, uh, there are certain optimization uh, algorithms available within uh, Quantum Espresso. And uh, with that, we can uh, carry out a, a force optimization on this uh, structure. Uh, that is to reduce uh, the hellman feynman forces uh, down to a, a selected threshold value which you have here uh, like 0 0.001 Rydberg per bore you can change the unit to EV per angstrom 0 0.01 EV per angstrom or just keep it as it is so it's up to you what degree of uh, accuracy you want uh, in the force optimization there are different methods available uh, like BFGS, Bryden, Fletcher, Goldfarb and Sano and there is a damped molecular dynamics also. So BFGS is more standard uh, uh, that is used in most of the papers. And this is a maximum time uh, just like in SCF calculation. So after a certain time has elapsed, if your calculation has still not converged, uh, it will kill the calculation uh, so it's uh, set usually at a very high value and maximum steps so uh, while uh, an iteration is carried out at each uh, step of the configuration uh, the total energy is calculated total uh, and different uh, forces on each of the individual atoms uh, in the unit cell those are calculated and for that uh, until uh, the loop converges uh, to your selected uh, threshold value it can keep going on but uh, sometimes it happens that uh, it does not uh, reach convergence so you can select uh, the number of steps uh, how many steps so usually uh, have a high number of steps like 201 or something like that so if uh, needed it the calculation can go on because otherwise if you set it very small like say 10 steps or 50 steps then within uh, those convergence steps it uh, may not uh, give you the optimized structure so I usually set it to round about 200 so once uh, all my uh, simulation decks are set up uh, another important thing to do is always uh, have a look at the input file because then we get a very good knowledge of how uh, to set the flags because uh, in case uh, we have to do our simulation on a uh, cluster for example or maybe on a Linux system and uh, advanced users will do that in fact so uh, for that kind of a situation it is always good to have a solid knowledge about the input files so here you can see the calculation type is relaxed so here is also a possibility of variable cell so relax means that your cell is okay you are satisfied with the cell but it will only manipulate the position of the atoms and if you are um, uncertain about the lattice parameters that whether you your lattice parameters are absolutely correct uh, uh, for uh, from the point of view of force optimization then you might want to use a variable cell relaxation so in that case I turn this flag on and you will see a VC relax type of flag coming in so this is the value VC relax and if I turn it no you just uh, this button is used to update so whatever I am inputting here in the GUI is being updated uh, right here in the input file so you can see uh, this is how it is describing the system the cut of energies are there highest lattice number of atoms uh, occupations convergence threshold all these things are uh, input here and also uh, uh, the pseudo potential files uh, uh, these are uh, coming in bundled with this version so we already have them So what we can do uh, right now is we can go for uh, 
the simulation, running the simulation of the structure. So I can put it on the run and uh, it will prompt me to save the project. and I can run the calculation for optimization. So uh, while this calculation is running, I already have a, a converse calculation which I have saved to cut down the time. So I can, this is the simulation I have so I open that in my project the once the file in which I have already uh, have the results I've done the sim simulation previously so here we can see uh, go to the result block and we can see many different things so all the calculations uh, had been done in this particular file. So you have uh, several things like OPT, OPT. So this opt is the optimization and if you select the movie, uh, it will show you uh, how the structural optimization has evolved and what changes are there. So there are only two steps because as I said it was already a, a converse structure which I took from a database. So there is not much of a change uh, with respect to the position of the atoms or uh, the cell parameters and uh, uh, it's pretty okay to proceed with the unoptimized structures if you have uh, got it from a reliable database. But uh, if you are building a new structure or something you are not sure about, it's always good to first run an optimization and then you can take the optimized structure and uh, do your other calculations. But uh, this is pretty much an optimized structure so I had gone ahead with the other calculations. So this will show me the band structure. And the vertical axis minimum and maximum has been set to 7 minus 7 to plus 7 EV. So I can put it like minus 10 to plus 10. You can also change the ticks. If you want. And I have the symbols uh, checked in for better visibility. So uh, today uh, as I have input more number of points for each segment of the Bilan zone sampling that is the gamma mk gamma pa for each segment I have 50 points. So uh, this structure looks much uh, dense in uh, the number of points and uh, that is the right kind of thing to do and uh, we can observe that this uh, material unlike graphene it is having a band gap so uh, it is around uh, 1 1.7 1.8 um, electron volts is the band gap in uh, standard uh, references for MOS2 so it is uh, not giving uh, uh, a bad uh, band structure it's quite acceptable uh, with uh, other functionals like HAC or uh, hybrid functionals uh, we can get even more accurate band gaps uh, here we have been using PBE I'll show you here because we can uh, set different kind of different kind of uh, functionals uh, if we look at the input file in the SCF 
So there is, uh, exists a flag, uh, the type of DFT, which is uh, because this one here is basically uh, doing uh, the default calculation. Default is generally LDA. It is set to LDA uh, for uh, it depends also on the quantum espresso version that you are using. So you can set uh, different type of uh, calculations using a flag uh, called DFT type. So you can use uh, PBE, uh, the GGA or uh, LDA or uh, some even some hybrid functionals. But uh, right here you don't uh, need that at present. We will uh, discuss in our next tutorials about these uh, different uh, options when we become more familiar with the uh, with the input file and how to manually edit the input file uh, we will go to those uh, advanced topics so again uh, going to the results so this is the band structure you can take a screenshot And save it in your directory you can select the type all right and uh, this is the back button to go back to the screen where you have all the results and you can select the DOS And here we see an interesting thing that uh, it is showing the not just the total loss but it is showing each of the different type of patterns because it is a uh, not a single um, uh, type of atom is involved here there are molybdenum atoms and sulfur atoms and also the factor of spin up and spin down uh, so we are seeing that uh, the different components in this uh, projected DOS and on top of that in black is the total up and total uh, down spin components of the DOS. So you can uh, have a lot of information uh, you can extract uh, from this kind of a density of states plot. So this brings us to the end of today's tutorial and I uh, hope you like this uh, kind of video tutorials uh, which are uh, trying to give a very uh, brief introduction to uh, materials modeling and uh, we would like to go into uh, higher and more uh, complicated uh, topics uh, as we uh, progress and uh, do support my channel. Uh, uh, press the like, share and subscribe buttons and uh, thank you very much. Take care. Stay safe. Goodbye.